The rollout of the vaccination programme is currently underway, and our priority as an executive is to protect our people and society by having the population vaccinated by summer. The executive has obviously reached a decision, uh, the right decision, I would say, and um, I'm glad that we now have reached a, a collective executive position that supports, that is supported by the public health advice. Um, I think that it's a very difficult decision and not something that we take lightly and we understand that it will impact you know, gravely on many people's lives, just their own personal freedom but also um, in terms of the business community who will be impacted. This is a necessary intervention. It was required because of the current um, situation we're in. And I think that what comes next is where we see developments with the vaccine, where we see developments with mass testing. And I certainly am going to work with all executive colleagues to make sure we give, give people that hope and that light at the end of the tunnel. The global medical community has come together in a way never seen before. And we now have a vaccines that will help break the back of COVID and allow us to start thinking about a future. A future free of this wretched and debilitating uh, illness. Those of us who, are, who will ask how we are able to come up with the vaccine so fast. And other diseases vaccine can uh, take years to create, or we may find, never find one at all. But the answer is simple. The world has never had to face a, a problem like COVID-19. And never before has so much energy, know-how, money and resources been powered into finding an answer to a medical problem. COVID effectively locked down the world, and this couldn't, couldn't be allowed to continue. The government has unveiled its plan to roll out the vaccine to the whole of the state. And I welcome that plan, though I would have preferred more detail, particularly in relation to how GPs and our healthcare workforce will be utilising in uh, vaccinating millions of people. Greater to will seek to spread false information to sow fear and doubt. And we saw this in the early days of the pandemic. Some groups, uh, ch some groups chose to frighten or sell half-baked ideas to confuse in order to further their own aims and agendas. We cannot allow this to happen again. The mass vaccination programme is only the, the only option that we have to stamp out COVID and get life as close to the old normal as we can. I would call on anyone who would knowingly spread disinformation to stop and think about the real damage. We need to be putting pressure on the, on the pharmaceutical companies. I mean, we had a situation where three out of five days we saw issues with supply. And my colleague David Cullinan raised this in the Dáil alongside other uh, members of the opposition. And it was only at that point that the Minister for Health said and that he hadn't spoken to AstraZeneca. Um, and it is, it is as a result of that uh, political pressure that he did that. I mean, that's a very casual approach to have. What we need is a pro active government. Let's do everything that we can to get everyone this vaccination. The only way we are going to manage this emerging crisis of, of COVID-19 is to test and we need to be consistent in that approach. Um, in the last few minutes um, the British government have said that we need to social isolate. However, this doesn't uh, come in line with, with their stance of not closing schools. We need an all-Ireland approach here. Sinn Féin have been consistently clear and stated that an all-Ireland approach is what's going to take to, to manage this uh, virus and to protect all the people on this island. Boris is saying that they're, they're taking drastic measures now to, to try and tackle this and they're telling people to self-isolate. How can we do that if we're sending children into schools where they're all going to be in close proximity? It doesn't add up. Um, you know, so we've been calling from the end of last week that we need to close schools with immediate effect and that's the only way we're going to tackle this. Um, time is running out and we, we, need, we need to act fast and we need to act together. Okay, um, just finally, the UK has ordered around 400 million uh, doses of vaccines against COVID-19. Given the, shall we say, what slow pace of the EU's own vaccine rollout, would you like to see any excess doses coming to Ireland? Yes, I, I would like to see not just between Ireland uh, and Britain, but, but globally, a real sense of, of generosity and solidarity when it comes to vaccination, because we, we need to ensure that there is not a reservoir of this virus anywhere. I mean, we live in a global community, so any notion of, of kind of a, a narrow nationalist view... Of, specific, of specifically, though, would you like to see 
vaccines from the UK are going to Ireland? Well, certainly if there is an, an excess of supply um, in, in Britain uh, and if there is a capacity for, for that to be shared with Ireland at some point, uh, well, yes, of course, absolutely. The project here is to get people vaccinated. And this is, as I heard your previous contributor remark, this is this is a race uh, against uh, this uh, virus and against death. So, so yes, I think a spirit of fairness and generosity needs to prevail in this, my goodness, above uh, all, all other issues. So yes, is, is the answer. And if the scenario, by the way, Sophie, were vice versa, uh, I would expect that a similar generosity would be uh, share, you know, afforded to the British people because the virus doesn't care about politics or or borders or any of these things. And we all share the same human biology. And it is so important that the incredible work that has been done by scientists internationally, including at, at Oxford University um, and uh, across the globe, that the, the fruits of that endeavour and knowledge and expertise is shared in the way that, that good science would okay. intend. And that means keeping all of our fellow human citizens safe and alive and well. It's, like, it's not like anything I've ever experienced before. Um, it took me you know, the best part of three weeks to get back onto my feet. Um, and I'm glad I got there, but I have to say, I'm so grateful for the vaccines. I can't imagine what I would have went through if I didn't have the vaccine. So I would encourage anybody who, who still at this point has not taken up the vaccine to please do so. It'll make the difference between, you know, hospitalisation or not, uh, loss of life or not. Um, it'll make a difference between your loved one who perhaps would need, you know, cancer surgery or surgery of some other nature, being able to get that or not. So um, I would use this opportunity in my experience again to say to people, please get the vaccine. It is the best defence that we have for you, for your family and for the health service. is very clear, if you are not an essential service, shut your doors.